Alright everybody, um, this is the supplementary video uh, to answer some more questions and kind of help you out with the third grade workshop, uh, kind of to cover some things that weren't covered in the initial presentation. So I'm going to be going off of this uh, outline here, and so you might want to have it out with you just to kind of follow along. The key to the third grade workshop is a sense of urgency, okay? You have to have a sense of really trying to clip through things to make sure that you have um, time to get everything in. Now, that doesn't mean you have to rush through things. It just kind of means you really want to make sure you're picking up your cues in this, that you're really trying to dovetail one thing into the next and really making sure your transitions are clear so you know exactly um, where you're going and you know exactly what you need to be telling them concisely so you're not repeating yourself. Okay? So, I'm going to be using the board for this because a lot of it is board work and a lot of it is very specific, but where you're going to want to write things to make sure that your board is organized. Okay? Um, alrighty. So, when you come in, you do your introduction like you normally do. Write your name on the board. Same. Okay? Again, you're going to say that normally when Mary Brown comes into your classroom, we're there to talk to you about a plan that you're going to see, but today you're not going to see it, but you're going to get a workshop. Which means for the next 50 minutes, you're going to be in their classroom talking to them about storytelling. And before you get into that, you want to make sure that you clear out your rules, which are very simple. You go over your rules, make sure everybody's on board. Then you launch into your workshop and you say, okay, as I mentioned, I'm here to talk about storytelling and actually different careers in storytelling. Because storytelling has been around for many, many years. And so if you have a really great story, what's one way you could share the story, okay? Make sure that you say share, not tell. Because there are many different ways you can share a story besides using your voice, right? Uh, so we want to say what's one way you could share a story. And the responses that you're looking for are write, um, tell. Um, some people might say sh uh, that you could uh, act or show, show the story. Um, pictures, music. Is that all of them that I'm looking for? Dance. Now someone might say, you could uh, type a story. Yep, that's another way of writing. Um, so make sure that you, you know, that you're really kind of trying to keep these headings. If someone gives you something that you didn't think about that is a completely different way of sharing the story, you can definitely add it to the list. There can definitely be more. Okay? So you get your list, and then you say, wonderful, and we're going to start our workshop today with pictures. And has, and then you, you propose the question, has anyone ever heard of the phrase, I'm looking for a black marker. Where's my black marker? Oh, I put it in here. Okay. Um, has anyone ever heard of the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words? Okay, see if they've heard of it. Okay? And if someone has heard of it, they say, okay, great. Uh, can anyone tell me what they think that means? Get their response. And then you reiterate, yes, a picture is worth a thousand words means that different people can look at the same picture and tell a different story. Now, you all happen to be very lucky because I, I'm sorry, this is the transition into the board section, you all happen to get lucky because I am a magnificent whiteboard artist, and I want to share one of my best pieces with you. Now, I have fun with this. I like to create a little weird, I guess he's French, she's French, I don't know. Just have a little bit of fun with them, okay? I like to create my best piece with you. Once I draw my best piece on the board, I'd like you to raise your hand if you can tell me what is happening in my masterpiece. That is what works best for me phrasing-wise, is to say, who can raise their hand and tell me what is happening in my picture? That works best for me, okay? So then I ask them all to close their eyes, because I want everyone to see the, see the picture all at the same time. Some people say, oh, I get nervous drawing at the board, so I want everyone to close their eyes. Um, it's up to you what you want to say, but have them close their eyes so that everyone can see at the same time, because obviously the joke is, is that it's not a great masterpiece, okay? So you say, everyone close your eyes, and I don't want anyone peeking. Okay, so cover your eyes. And then you go up to the board and you draw. While their eyes are closed, I like to have one of them too. It's like, oh, this is the most wonderful masterpiece I've ever drawn. 
I have never seen anything so wonderful in my entire life. Oh, yes, this is great. You know, I like to mess with that heart. No peeking, no peeking. Okay. And then I say, open your eyes. Now, this is what I like to draw. This gives me pretty consistent good results, okay? But you might choose to draw something else. It's totally up to you, okay? So, <laughs> of course, Ed Sales is messing with me while I'm taping this. <laughs> So, some people draw triangles, some people like to draw other things. I, this is what I like to draw, okay? So they open your eyes and they all react and they all say, oh, that's not good. And I just sort of laugh along and say, okay, who can tell me what's happening in my masterpiece? So you get a couple ideas from the kids. Um, and I let that lead me into the transition to the next part, which is getting details. So I say, okay, I'm hearing a lot of different ideas from a lot of different people and I'm looking at my picture and then realizing it might not be the great masterpiece that I thought it was because I left out a lot of things. Who can raise their hand and tell me the one word to describe everything I need to add to this picture to make it clearer? Now, they might say faces. Yes, faces is part of it, but we need to have a lot more than faces. Faces is definitely part of it, but I'm looking for that one word to describe it in everything. Okay, faces, clothes, hair. Noses, that's part of faces. You get what I'm saying? Can you only give me the one word that describes all of that? Okay, so if they're still not getting details, what you might say is, okay, so if you're far away from something, so you're far away from a painting, and you want to get a better look at it, you would walk closer so that you could see all of the what. And hopefully they see details, right? So I think that should probably get you to get, it, or get them to give it to you. Let's hope. All right. So then you write, yes, details, and I write it nice and big at the top, details, so that they remember. Details, yes, details are going to be important in all the stories that we tell today. So I wrote that up there to remind us. Great, so let's add some details to this picture. Okay, so now this part, you're going to want to start with the people, and then you're going to want to add details to the things, okay? So, I started saying, okay, let's start with this figure here. We don't know, so someone just tell me, is this a boy or a girl? Yes, it's a boy, okay? And can you give me the name of a boy nobody here in this classroom? Now, the reason we like to make sure it's nobody in the classroom is so that nobody's feelings get hurt if there's something sort of silly happening up here. We want to try to keep it as respectful as possible. So, can you give me a boy or no one in the class? Bob, okay, Bob. And so then... You add details to Bob. My pictures always pretty much look the same. This is Bob. I like to give the boys a mohawk, ears. Now, don't let your inability to draw hold you back. Obviously, I'm not letting it hold me back. But oftentimes, kids think it's super funny when you're a terrible drawer. And also, sometimes they think you're super awesome when you think you are really terrible at it. So, I don't be self-conscious about the way that you draw. So I always give them hands, and then I also give them some sort of a bag, always. I always give the boys kind of a backpack because it can help you in the end to solve a story, okay? So I would recommend adding some sort of a bag for each character. So this is Bob, and I always write the name at the bottom so I can remember so that it's a helpful reminder, okay? Now, what about this figure? Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. Can you give me the name of somebody not in this class? Sheila. Okay. Sheila. Now, if you don't know how to spell someone's name, like if they give you a crazy name, oh, I never heard of that name. Can you tell me how to spell it? You can feel free to ask them. So, Sheila. Sheila. Um, and Sheila has a ponytail, and she has some big old eyes, and some eyelashes, a nose, and a mouth, hands. And she's got a little bag that she carries here. Great, so there's Sheila. Okay, great, so you've got some characters. Now, what about the squiggly line? Now, they could give you anything here, okay? So you got to be prepared for it, but whatever they give you, just go with it. So it's a volleyball net. Okay, it's a volleyball net. So we're going to do this, and we're going to make the net go like this, like so. There's the net. Great. 
right, so if this is a volleyball net, what do we think this could be? A volleyball, okay. A volleyball. Okay, it looks more like a baseball, but volleyball, okay, great. Now it's time to move into the who, what, when, where, why, all that good stuff, okay? So you say, okay, we've got some more details in this picture, but we still don't know the story. So to get the story, we're going to use the five W's and the H of writing. Does anyone think they can raise their hand and tell me the five W's and the H? Now you can ask them to raise their hand and give you one. You can ask them to raise their hand and give you all of them. It's up to you. Who can raise their hand and give me the five W's and the H of writing? You're going to want to write them in a specific way on the board, though. Okay, because you're going to want the beginning, middle, and end organized up here. So you want who, where, when, what, why, and how. Okay, because that sets you up for beginning, middle, and end. Wonderful, so you have the five W's and the H, and now you get to fill them in. So... You start to say, okay, we already know some of this information. Who are our who's? If you want to let them yell it out, that's fine. You want to have them raise hand. Who are our who's? Everyone give me our who's. Sheila and Bob. Great. So I always just abbreviate the names because I'm trying to save time. Sheila and Bob. Great. Now we have some details, but who can give me exactly where Sheila and Bob might be? Yes. They're at the beach. Okay, great. So if they give you at the beach, then you want to add enough details that can help you really formulate a story from those details, right? So you're going to say, okay, so maybe that's the shoreline. And if you've got color markers, awesome. Go ahead and use them. So here's the water, and then waves crashing. Great. And then there is probably the sun up here. And very good. Um, and then, what else could be at the beach? You could do a beach umbrella with maybe like a blanket underneath. Okay? And then maybe a bunch of sand. Great. So where they're at the beach. Now backing up just a little bit. If and any of these details in the squiggle or the circle that are there for your initial drawing, if they want to make either one of those, say, a snake or a bird, or they want to make it another person, they want to make it a snake or a bird, it's fine. It's um, tricky if you name it, okay? So if, they, if it's Sammy the snake, okay? Well, if it's Sammy the snake, then all of a sudden Sammy is also going to have an objective and an obstacle, okay? But I wouldn't name a snake. I'd say, oh, it's just a snake. Because it's just how it be a snake and not have it be another character in your story. Not have it be another who. Okay? So if they say they want to make the circle another person, I would steer them against that. Remember, this is your board. And you control it how you want to. And whatever ideas you choose to take or don't take are really going to help you make it so that the story isn't a mess in the end. So I'd say, actually, so we've already got a couple characters. Let's give a detail of where they might be or what might be going on. Really steer them in the direction that you want them to go. Okay? Where? The beach. Awesome. Now, when are they at the beach? Who can tell me when they're at the beach? Do you get any? Now, if someone gives you something contradictory that's something you've already drawn, say they say, nighttime. Well, it's not nighttime because we've already got a sun up here. Can you give me another idea? Daytime. Great. Daytime. I wouldn't invite them to get super specific, but make sure they're really using the details that you've given them. Okay? So then you say, okay, well, we've got the beginning of our story. We've got our setting. We've got Sheila and Bob. They're at the beach during the daytime. Okay, great beginning. But every good story has to be part of the beginning, a blank and a blank. What are those last two blanks? Middle and end, right? So we need a middle and an end to our story. Okay, now this is the part where it can get a little bit confusing, okay? So basically what you're going to do is you're going to introduce... Uh, a word, you're going to define it, and then you're going to give an example of it. And this is going to be true for the next three. You introduce, define, example. So we're going to start with the what. Okay? The what is going to be the beginning of our middle. And another way to think about the what is to call it an objective. Okay? And a 
objective, and then you define it. So who can tell me what objective means? Hopefully they can. You might have to be writing with some probing questions, such as you might see on a video game where it says your objective is to get 500 stars. So your, what does that mean? Your objective is your what? Your task or your goal, okay? So after you define it, you're going to go into an example. Now, I have tried cutting this part out of my workshop before, and it truly made doing this story part a lot harder because I didn't get active objectives, okay? So it really helps to go through this story of you going outside the door, or if you're not able to go outside the door, you know, you wanted to sit in the chair or whatever it is. Um, it really helps you get active objectives, okay? So you say, okay, objective. So I am going to tell you a very brief story in which a character has a very clear objective, okay? <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a girl named Lisa. Hi. Now, Lisa wanted to go outside the door, so she said, well, I'm going to go outside the door. So she turned, and she walked, and she went outside the door. So I would actually go into the door and pretend to go out, right? And then I would come back, and I would say, okay, that was a very short story. It had a beginning, middle, and end. It had an obvious objective. Okay, so whatever story you tell should have a very clear beginning, middle, and end. Okay? Um, and obviously a very clear objective. What was my objective? To go outside the door. So let's give our characters up here <coughs> some objectives, okay? What is Bob's objective? Now, this is where you're really in control of your board. You can take or not take whatever you want. If someone raises their hand and says, it's Bob's objective to, um, to go find Santa Claus. To go find Santa Claus, okay? Does that really work with the details that we have in this picture, right? So... Make sure that you're really encouraging them to always use the details, and that will really help you, okay? So what is Bob's objective? Bob's objective is he wants to beat Sheila in volleyball. Beat Sheila in volleyball. And what's Sheila's objective? Sheila wants to go swimming, okay? Sheila wants to swim. Now you see, these objectives kind of are, they don't work together, right? They took two very similar, uh, dissimilar objectives. Now, her objective was to beat him in, in volleyball or to play him in volleyball or whatever. It would work better, but they have very dissimilar objectives. So we're going to have a little work to do here to solve this, but I specifically did that so that we could work together and solve it, okay? So then, after you've gotten your objectives for your characters here, then you say, okay, do you remember my story about Lisa wanting to go outside the door? Yeah, was it very exciting? No, why? I'll tell you why, okay? Because we were missing the why, the meat, the exciting part of the story. And another way to think of that is an obstacle. Can anyone tell me what an obstacle is or where they've heard it? They can always tell you where they've heard it. Always, always. Where have you heard it? On uh, an obstacle course, great. And so if they say obstacle course, I would say, okay, so on an obstacle course, is it easy to go from the beginning to the end? No, why not? Because there are tires and there's things, right? So there's things in your what? In your way. Yeah, so an obstacle is something in your way, so you just sort of talk them through that. Okay? Great. So let's make my story, at least when I go outside the door, more exciting. So... Uh, and this is what I do. I like to pick a student that's sitting closest to the door, have them move their chair, sit in front of the door, and that's my obstacle. Um, you can do it however you want. So then I say, okay, you sit over there, give them a round of applause, thank you so much. And then I go back to the story. Once upon a time, this girl named Lisa, hi, Lisa wanted to go outside the door. So she said, well, I'm going to go outside the door. So she turned, and she walked, and she went outside the door. Okay? Um, but you wouldn't do that because there's an obstacle. <laughs> So you turn, she went out, ah, and then you make it as big and dramatic as you want to that there's now an obstacle. So you say, oh, my story's become a lot more interesting because of my obstacle. So let's make our, my story appear a little bit more exciting. So uh, what is Bob's obstacle? Why can't he beat Sheila in volleyball? Now, it would be really nice if they said, oh, well, she doesn't want to play with him. Right? She wants to go swimming. That would be great if they thought about that. Um, but they might say something else, like, 
his obstacle is he can't reach the ball. It's stuck up on the it's stuck up on the on the umbrella. He can't reach the ball. And why can't Sheila go swimming? Again, it would be really great if they said, well, Bob keeps trying to play volleyball with her so she can't, but they'll probably say something like, no swimsuit. Okay? So you got your obstacles for up here, okay? So then you say, okay, I've got my middle, and now it's time to end the story with the how. And the how is how are the characters going to get what they want? How is Bob going to beat Sheila in volleyball even though she doesn't want to play with him? Or because he can't reach the ball, actually. And how is Sheila going to be able to swim when she doesn't have a swimming suit? But before we end the story up here, I want to end my story of Lisa going outside the door. So, how could Lisa get around the obstacle of this lovely person, Joanna, or whoever it is, sitting in front of the door? Who could give me some creative ideas? Before you do, two rules um, that everybody has to get what they want and no one can get hurt. Okay? So keep that in mind. So how can I end my story so you get some creative ideas? And then you say, okay, thank you so much. You can take a seat, put your chair back over. Wonderful. So let's end our story up here. Let's start with Bob. How is Bob going to beat Sheila in volleyball, even though he can't reach the ball? How is he going to reach that ball? Anybody have an idea? Okay, so you can climb the pole and reach the ball. It looks like you can climb up and reach the ball. So Bob is going to climb the pole. And how is Sheila going to go swimming even though she doesn't have a swimsuit? Remember, use the details, right? So this is the point where you want to encourage the details because we don't want them saying something. She can go in a birthday suit, right? Hopefully, they give you that it could be in her purse. Oh, she's got it in her bag, so she, she just has it in her bag. So now, you've got your story, okay? So when you've told the whole story, I'm sorry, written the whole story on the board, then it's time for you to recap it. I like to do the one woman version of the story, where I tell the whole story through acting, but you could just tell it. You could just say, okay, so we need to put this story all together. So you would say, once upon a time, Sheila and Bob were at the beach during a beautiful day. And Bob really wanted to beat Sheila in volleyball, but he couldn't reach the ball, it was the, right? So you can go through it that way. And it's your job to kind of tie it all together. I act it out. It's whatever you want to do. But you really do need to recap the whole thing so they can hear it all together. Okay? So they say, give yourselves a round of applause. Great story. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay? So that's really the trickiest section, is the board section. And really, it's just about making sure you continue your story at the door and applying it to the board. It's, so you do your story, board story, your story, board story. Okay? So that's the board section. And then you move into the acting section. And so what's going to happen is you talk about how an actor's body can tell a story ten times louder than what they say. And I gave the example of, I am very excited. And ask them if they believe me, no, because my body language is talking louder than what my voice says. So now it's time for them to tell the story using just their bodies. I have them stand up. Now for this whole workshop, they can stay seated at their desks. Um, you don't have to make space in the room. So if they are at their desks, you can just have them stand up right behind their chairs. Um, and then it just goes through what's in your outline. So you have a student stand behind a chair, explain uh, that they're going to tell a story about a human position just like a statue. And whatever stories you want to tell, it's fine. Um, you might want to create a whole story of the day or random ones, like I just got some, you just got some money B, or you got a million dollars, or you found out that your baby brother's really an alien. Okay, whatever it is, you can make them random or you can make it sort of like I did in the video where it was sort of the story of the day. It's totally up to you. To go through a couple of them, having them freeze like a statue, just make sure it's very clear about one, two, three, freeze, or whatever your instructions are so they know when to freeze. Whether it's just, uh, you just yell freeze and they freeze, or whether you count, whatever it is. Okay? 
So then you give themselves a round of applause. A round of applause is always a great transition for anything. At the end, just to move you to the next thing, to have them take a seat. So you say, we're going to use our bodies to tell stories a little bit more. We're going to do that through tableaus. And you explain what a tableau is. Tableau is a group of people frozen in different poses that tell a story. It's like a living photograph. Um, so tell them they're going to make frozen poses, only now we're going to have more than one pose creating the whole story. Okay? So you start off by saying you're going to tell or create some tableaus of a story that you already know. And so then you show them this. Right? So you show them this and have them raise their hands if they know what the story is. Well, by writing is very good. By looking at the details, can they tell me uh, if it's beginning, middle, and end? It's the middle. Very good. Um, so we need a whole story by having a beginning and an end. So this is when you're going to get the students up to create tableaus. So I just have whoever gives me the characters at the beginning come up and play those characters if they want to, the mother and the red writing head. And then before I do the end picture, I tell them how I want the story to end, that the wolf gets scared off, because there are so many versions of Little Red Riding Hood that I want to set them up for success. So what happens at the end? Oh, the wolf gets chopped into the little bits. Well, no, that's not how it goes, right? Then you're not setting them up to succeed. So you want to make sure they say, at the end of this story, the wolf just gets scared off, okay? So that just saves anybody from feeling kind of silly and uh, sets them up for success. So I say, okay, well, I already told you one character is the wolf, so who'd like to be the wolf? And then you get the other characters, so you get them into their tableaus, and uh, you count them up, one, two, three, you put the whole story together, very good, yay, and you get them to sit down, okay? Now, in this outline, um, it doesn't have doing a secondary story. People generally have time to do a second story, but if for some reason you're running short time, you don't have to, and you can use either one of these Norman Rockwell photos. It's totally up to you. Um, but remember that you have to create the story with them before they can create the tableau. So once you finish Little Red Riding Hood, you give them a round of applause. Say, okay, you did such a great job with that. Then I want to create some more tableaus of a story uh, that we're going to make up, of a brand new story. We're still going to use a painting to give us um, an idea to start from of, of how to create a story that's going to be a brand new story. So everyone take a look at this picture. Look at the details. So you're going to need to go through with them talking about the characters, right? Who do you think this character is? Who do you think this character is? This character. And kind of create the story. Why do you think the little boy ran away? Okay. Great. So, it, so do we think this is the beginning, middle, or end? Do we think it's the middle? So you say, okay, we need to create the beginning and end. So who do we think the characters are at the beginning, right? You really have to walk them through before you get them up. But the same thing as you do with Little Red. You get them up, teach them each pose. Pose at the end, they're all together. Sometimes they'll say this is the beginning or, that, or the end, so you also have to be prepared for that as well. Okay? So that's that. Um, then, um, talk about uh, the next part of the workshop. Now you can use this as a transition. You can say, okay, so we've already told a lot of stories through life and point pictures. We've acted out and shown stories, we've told stories, we've written stories. So now I'd like to tell stories through music. You can do a transition that way. Or you can say, just, you know, the next section of our story, or our, our workshop, is how music can tell a story. Because just like in our pictures, or like in acting, or in painting, you have to look at the details to really be able to tell the story. So, then you transition by saying, I would like everyone to pretend that you are a big hot shot Hollywood movie directors. And I have brought along the soundtrack to your newest movie. And then make sure you define soundtrack. Okay. So, um, yes, the soundtrack is the music that plays along with the movie to help tell the story. Now, music, if you listen to the details, can tell a story. Okay? So what I'd like you to do when I ask you to is to close your eyes. I'd like you to listen to the details of the music and think about what kind of movie this could be in. Okay, first thing about the type of movie. Is it a horror movie? Is it a funny movie? Right? Go through all that. And then you go through and explain that they should be thinking about beginning, middle, and end. Who, what, when, where, what, how, all of those things. Okay? I like to let them give me their favorite number between 1 and 11. Um, that's how many tracks are on the CD. 
Do you want to just choose for them? That's fine too. It's kind of fun to let them choose as well, though. So you play the music, you let it go for a little bit longer than I let mine play in the video. It's just, you know, there's no point letting it run forever. That's just me. So you let them listen to, I would say, at least 15 to 20 seconds of the, the music just so they really get a feeling for it. And then you take as many movies as you have time for. Okay? And then it'd be nice if you have time to do at least three tracks of music and create and listen to the movies that they created, but uh, it's all about how much time you have left in the workshop. And then um, after you've done that, you say, great. Now, I have just a little bit of time left, and I'd like to tell stories in one more way. Now, hopefully you'll have time to do the dance section. If you don't have time to do the dance section, that's okay, but it's always a lot of fun. Um, in your outline, it says there are a lot of ways in which you have a career in storytelling, movies, theater, dance. All that stuff. That's actually the wrap-up. Um, and um, so it actually... If you see in here, it says, Since I'm an actor, I would tell a story by acting out how else could story be share. You make a movie, write a song, draw a picture. So you can, you can go through that. Um, but really, this section is sort of more from what it is in here to the dance section and wrapping up ways you could have a career in storytelling and kind of talking about those careers. So for the dance section, you say, Okay, uh, I need a story to create this dance from. i like someone to tell me the story of their morning from the time they woke up to the time they got on the bus um, or that their parents brought them to school. So I like to give it a very concrete timeline because you don't want to have, you know, story of an entire day. Try to keep it really concrete. And then I try to take out the highlights from their story. So they might say, well, I woke up, I fed the dog, ate a Pop-Tart, and then got on the bus. And I just try to distill it to three moves, because it's simple. Say, okay, so we need to create a dance move for each part of this morning. So I like to create the first dance move, uh, just so they kind of get an idea of what I'm looking for. So I think, so if I want to create a dance move with a fed dog, it would look something like this. Like I'm dumping the big bag of dog food out, or whatever. And then you say, okay, I'd like everyone to try to move a feeding dog to the concrete, get everyone to stand up. Now the practice move, very good. Okay, so that's the move of feeding the dog. Now I need someone to show me a dance move for eating a pop tart. So that way they have sort of a frame of reference of what I'm looking for, that it needs to just be a simple movement. So you get eating a pop tart and you got on the bus, you get moves for that. So what I do is I say, who can uh, show me eating a pop tart? I call on them, they show me, and say, okay, great, come on up here. And then they're going to be my representative up front so they can remember what the dance move is. And then see them getting on the bus. Who can show me a move of getting on the bus? They show me the move. Uh, looks great. Come on up here. So then I say, okay, so we're going to put all these moves together. So I'm going to be the conductor. And so when I say, okay, eat your Pop-Tart. Go ahead and do it. They say, get on the bus. You do the dance move. Okay. So you kind of coach them through that. And I always use track three for the music player. And so you go through and say, okay, here we go. And then you have fun with it. You look through the dance moves. Everybody has a fun time. They laugh. They giggle. You stop the music. Very good. Give yourself a round of applause. Have everyone take a seat. Very good. And then now it's the final wrap of this storytelling. Okay? So you say, um, so if you like some of the ways we told stories today, you could actually make it your career. You could make a career of telling stories through pictures, of being an actor, okay? Can anyone think of another career in storytelling so you're looking to kind of get some more ideas of other careers in storytelling? You might have to give them some to be prepared for that. But yeah, so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about what your dream job might be, that, hey, you really like some of the stuff you don't understand, that maybe you can make a career one in your job, okay? If you have time, take questions, and then time to leave. Just make sure you get all of your items with you, your three pictures and your CD player. If you have time to clear the board, that's usually really helpful too. And that is the third grade workshop in a nutshell. Um, yeah, I love this workshop, but just remember, you got to click through it to get everything in. So, okay, that's it. I'm going to come very close to the camera now. Bye-bye.